we have many wonderful challenges as we get a little older. And for me, one of those things is forgetting things. Where are my keys? <laughs> Why am I in this room? What is that person's name? I'm sure many of you face the same challenge and I want to talk to you today about five different practical things that you can do to improve your memory. It's an art form. My name is Margaret Manning. I'm with 60 and Me, and I want to thank you so much for being here today. We On this channel, we talk about all things related to getting a little older and the wonderful opportunities that we have. Our show today is brought to you by See Me Beauty. Now, See Me Beauty has a line of skincare products that are designed for older skin. Now, unique things happen as we get a little older. We cannot hide the wrinkles. They're not going to go away. But this skincare product line has wonderful ingredients that are meant to address the changing skin as you get older. Check out their website on seemebeauty.com and I think you'll find their ingredients and in their products quite interesting. So let's uh, go back to memory. Now, I don't often forget where my skincare products are because I put them in one place, and that is one of the techniques, making sure that everything stays in its place, that you don't put the scissors in a different drawer every day, that you don't move things around. But um, there's a lot of really practical ideas that I'm gonna offer for you here to consider. Now, Douglas Cooper uh, wrote this article for us, and you have a look at it because it's quite detailed, and it's also got some great links in it to places where the research came from that he talks about. Um, the, the main um, focus for him was a book that was called uh, Pr Book of Practical Memory, A Simple Guide. Sounds good. And this is some very practical and simple things that you can do um, if you're trying to remember names or remember places or directions. I personally am not wired for directions. I forget the, the, the way to get to places so easily. Um, I have to have little maps with me all the time, but that's just, you know, everyone has their own unique memory challenges. But it's, it does seem that it's harder to remember things as we get older. It shouldn't be because the data actually, and I'll talk about this in a minute, the data actually does show that some parts of your thinking a brain process from memory gets better as you get older. But um, I always think that my computer and my brain is pretty full and I have to now be selective about things that I remember. But there are some for safety purposes and other reasons that you need to you know, work on improving your memory. And there's some ways you can do it. So the first thing that he talks about is getting rid of memory disruptors. Now, there are some memory disruptors that we have control over. And I'm going to talk about some that you're going to go, yes, of course, Margaret, we know that. And it's and, and, and really, there's no magic bullet. It's not like I can say, do this one thing and you're never going to you know, have a memory problem before. But um, the, the first thing is to get rid of those disruptors. The first one is sleep. If you don't get enough sleep, you are going to potentially have more problems with your memory because during your sleep, your body does rejuvenate. It rebuilds new cells. It's it's the time that your brain just takes a break and, and rejuvenates, resets. And if you're not getting enough sleep, you're going to have challenges with, with your memory, potentially. Not always, but this is the, the in the book, the Practical Memory, a Simple Guide goes into this. So it's all just sort of uh, scientifically based sleep. Second thing is nutrition. Plant-based foods, nutritional food is so, so important. Your brain is just another organ in the body, right? So it's like it has to be fed just like your body for your muscles and your heart and your liver and all those parts. Your brain is, has to be fed not just good food, but water. You have to keep super hydrated. And that's something that I sometimes forget. But water is another thing that's really, really important. Also, you can do mindfulness training or mindfulness practice, meditation, yoga is wonderful, things that just calm you down and get your brain sort of away from the, the stress mode of, the, you know, the panic of, of fight or flight to actually relaxing and, and just growing. And that's important for memory too, is to focus. And I find this sometimes that, um, I know this is a silly example, but when I'm playing with my grandson and he has all these trains and I can't remember the names, like is it Percy or Edward? I know they're both blue, but how do you remember all that stuff? It's because I'm trying to think of too many things. I, you know, I may be playing with him or talking to him, but I'm thinking I've got to make that phone call. I've got to do this. And that's another thing that's, you know, like a, an interrupter for memory is when you're trying to do too many thoughts. Uh, <clears throat> stress reduction is pretty important. How many of you do yoga or any kind of meditative practice? I do meditate almost every day now. That's one of the benefits that's come from the, uh, the, the, the lockdown, stay at home time. I've got back into that habit and that really helps to, to remember things and keep your brain healthy. That's, that's important. So the missing keys thing, that's the first one, right? 
I, where do you put your keys? I, this is such a simple thing, is it? but it's a, it's a tip. Always put them in the same place. Always put them in the same place. Always. I mean, even for me, like it's which pocket, but I put them, when I come in the door, I lock the door, put it, put the key in a bowl. I have a bowl right by the door. It's a white bowl. I can see it. It's there. The keys are there. And that's what I do all the time. And actually, um, Douglas says to uh, picture it in your mind as you put it there. So as you put the key down, picture it, like use that as a memory jogger. And, um, and if you don't want, if you want to put it somewhere else, like in the kitchen, uh, in that drawer or something, you get a place that's not visible, just write it down somewhere, right? And, and there's a big stigma about writing things down. I think it's okay. And I always write notes when I go shopping. And even if you're, if you're putting things away, write, write down the location. And to be honest with you, it's always good that you have them in a place where all your papers are, where, where if you, something happened, you, your son or your daughter or friend could actually find them for you. Um, keys and, and, and uh, losing your car keys uh, and where you parked your car. That's another thing. The car keys, keep them always in a certain part of your, po of your purse or your bag or your pocket. And the car, always write down the number. Just It's just kind of a mental thing of like, um, I mean, I, t I sometimes make up a word with, if it's in the A um, category, it's like apples, apples, six apples, apple six. And just that helps sometimes to remember the, the initial or just write it down. Just put it in your little notepad in your purse. Don't worry about like pushing yourself to remember. If you have some challenges with just remembering stuff, just write it down. I don't think there's a problem with that. And the other one is, what, what, did, what did I come here to buy? Now, this has happened to me. It's scary, actually, sometimes. Well, I'll go into the grocery store and I'll have completely blank. What did I come in here for? Like, seriously. And, and I really, honestly, sometimes have to walk around until I see something that jogs the memory. I don't think I've ever walked out not remembering eventually, but I always take a list now. This is my thing. I take a list. And he, um, Douglas makes an ex a, 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 a suggestion that's like make up a word. So if you've got to get bread, um, eggs, apples, and tape, you can say bread, bread apples, uh, eggs, and tape. Beat. Is that right? <laughs> the E's first. Bread, eggs, apples, and tape. Beat. Or, you know, just if it's a simple thing, just uh, make up a little word and just keep that word in your brain. And that sometimes helps. I sometimes take pictures of things I need to, to look for because sometimes I have a specific, like for example, my um, printer ink. That's a really good example. It's I think it's 302, but then there's 304, 306, 324. So I always write that down. And that's that's for me has worked. Another thing is that what's what's his, what's her name? That's such a, I have never been good at names anyway, just even when I was 18. I've never been really good with work with names, so I've had to really work at it. I, what I was, the given suggestion by Douglas, and someone else made this one too, that always put like a word next to the person's name that reminds you like, my name is Margaret, so it might be Princess Margaret. Or if it's like, um, you know, your name's Ryan, it, or uh, you think of Ryan Gosling, or if, if, if his name is Ryan, or if it's like, for example, oh, like Joanne from Jersey. Joanne from Jersey, and that helps a lot. It's like either something that associates like Princess Margaret or, you know, a name of a celebrity, you know, like, um, oh, I don't know, George, if his name, his name is George, George Clooney, think of something that really you would remember or something about them. You know, they were from New York or they're from Jersey or they're from, you know, uh, Susie from Seattle. Just connect it with a, another word that you'll always remember. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with saying, I'm so sorry, I've forgotten your name. It doesn't matter. Just say it. It's better than sitting there the whole time thinking, oh my God, I don't know their name. How am I going to introduce them? I don't know their name. Just say, oh, sorry. I really, I'm, I apologize. I've forgotten your name. Don't even apologize. Say, excuse me, I've, I've, I've forgotten your name. And um, that, that's another thing that you can do to remember those names. Focus on their face or their hair or their their features. Look at them and, and like say, oh, Susie, you've got beautiful eyes. Gosh, those are pretty blue eyes. Susie with blue eyes. And then just remember that Susie has blue eyes. Blue eyes, it's Susie. And um, don't be afraid to ask. That's the most important thing. I think the other thing that uh, that uh, Douglas talks about, which I like, I really like his article, which is don't try, don't stress yourself about this. Trust me, my son, my two sons both forget things frequently and they're, you know, they're young and, and it happens. Everybody forgets things. But, you know, if you, if you need important numbers though, like your phone number, the phone number of your son or daughter or friend, 
just write it down. I, in my purse, I have a tiny little piece of paper that's got important numbers on it. And I just tuck that in my wallet with the, in the picture section, you know, like not in the money section or where you might drop it out. Just slot, slot, slot it in one of the sections. And I, even my bank, uh, secrets to my bank codes, not the whole number, but just little secrets. And I have words that are trigger words and I write them down. Do you do that too? I hope so. I mean, maybe you could just, if you've got a system, that you got, you know, for, for like, for example, passwords, I always use uh, a, an app, you don't have, don't have to use this one, it's just the one I use, which is called lastpass.com, lastpass.com, no affiliation at all, they're just a, 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 a site that I use, you put all your, all your passwords up there under a master key, so you only need one, ma you need one master password to get in, then everything else is there, and I find that really, really useful. Um, and they can auto populate it when you're ordering something. It will just go to last pass and pick up the password for you. It's very, very cool. So how do you deal with memory challenges? What secrets do you have? Share with, in the comment section below. I'd really like to know what you do and uh, uh, to, to remember things and uh, make it easier for us all. But again, thank you so much for being here, not forgetting not to join us. That's important. And uh, have a fabulous day wherever you are and, uh, and share your memory secrets, how you keep um, track of things how you improve your memory as you get older. So take good care, everybody. Have a fabulous day, and we will talk again very, very soon. Bye-bye for now.